Good morning, everyone, and what a pleasant morning it is here in Pleasanton, California. My name is Andre. I'll be your moderator today for this live demo of Stunner, our ultimate AAV quantitation tool. We will have a Q&A ses session after the live demo part is over. Um, so if you want to submit a question, please use the Q&A function in your Zoom navigation bar, either at the top or the bottom of your screen, depending on your settings. We'll get through as many questions as we can after the live part is over. And now I would like to introduce Kevin Lance, our um, Director of Marketing for Analytics here at Unchained. Um, he is our expert on Stunner and he will take us through what this instrument can be used for, for AAV quantitation. Kevin. All right, thanks for that introduction, Andre. Uh, as Andre said, today I'll be taking you through uh, Stunner and what Stunner can do is the ultimate AAV gene therapy tool. Uh, so Stunner is kind of the way I like to explain it, uh, the way to get the most AAV data possible out of just two microliters of sample. Uh, from that tiny, tiny sample, you're going to get a really uh, accurate and precise read on capsid titer, size and aggregation of your sample, and then empty full ratio as well. Uh, so how Stunner does that is by the three technologies that are inside of, uh, inside of Stunner. The UVVIS gets you a good answer on the quantif uh, quantification of both protein and DNA, which is you know, perfect for AAV. Uh, the DLS, or dynamic light scattering system, is going to be able to tell you the size and size distribution of your AAV, so you can see right away if you're dealing with a nice monodisperse, uh, you know, individual capsid sample, or something where aggregation has gotten out of hand. And the last technology is SLS, or static light scattering. That's going to be part of the DLS light scattering read, and it's going to be the starting point where you figure out how many particles, or capsids, are present in your sample. So this will be how we uh, figure out ultimately by, by uh, combining those three technologies, starting with SLS, how many capsids are in your sample, and to give you that accurate and precise capsid titer. So today, what I'll be taking you through is an uh, example of how to use Stunner's AAV quant application uh, to, you know, to get a very quick answer on those different characterization metrics. And we'll be loading up the Stunner plate, setting up the Stunner client software to run the experiment, and doing an example analysis of uh, two reads of AAV, done in quadruplicate each. And uh, you'll see all that in just a couple minutes. So first, let me introduce you to the Stunner plate. Uh, so this is a standard 8x12, you know, 96 well plate format, uh, and it's kind of the secret to how Stunner can do everything that it does so well. Um, it's engineered for uh, excellent accuracy and precision, uh, both for UVVIS and for DLS results. And um, really, well, to get to know it better, I think we're going to head over to the sample loading table, and I'll give you a close-up look at the Stunner consumable. Okay. So that is a closer look at the Stunner plate. And what you can see in, uh, in this sort of 8x12 arrangement is all of these little circles. And each one of those is a well where you're, you're going to add in your sample to get a read on Stunner. Uh, you'll also notice that I have my pipette set to 2 microliters, which is the exact volume that you're going to need uh, to get your, your data from your experiment. Now I'm also going to put a little black light here at the uh, bottom of the screen. So you can just see that there. What we're going to do to really make these wells you know, pop uh, through this live demo is take a little sample of fluorescein and add those to the wells. It's not something you would normally do in any kind of stunner experiment, uh, but it really shows exactly where those microfluidics are to help you understand a bit better how stunner works. So I take my two microliters of sample, and then I add them into my well. And what you're going to see pretty quickly is how that well enters the serpentine channel, or how that fluorescein enters the serpentine channel of the well, and that's where the sample is safe from evaporation uh, for up to two hours. So that's part of the secret for how we can get away with using such a small sample volume, is the sample's safe from locked in and, and safe from evaporation. Uh, so you can see in the uh, fluorescence there that the serpentine channel then leads into more of the microfluidic channel. And in the middle of the stunner plate where it's transparent, we have all of these uh, little microcuvettes. So inside of each microcuvette is where we'll be making the stunner read. Uh, that is a chamber with a known and fixed path length, so there's no moving parts or anything. Uh, that makes our UV vis reads very, very accurate and precise and gives us enough uh, sample volume to do DLS and SLS reads as well. So that's a quick look at a fluorescein 
loading into a sample. And then because we're you know, in a, a studio here, we're not going to run uh, AAV because of the BSL uh, considerations. But I'll just show you a quick example of loading IgG so you get an idea of what a normal sample would look like. And again, I'm taking the two microliters and dropping it into a well. And that's going to wick in there and be, again, safe from any kind of evaporation concerns. OK, so what we'll be doing uh, with this is taking it over to the Stunner software, setting up a run, and then we'll be looking at a, a results for AAV that we ran a little bit earlier today. So come on over with me. All right, so first up in any uh, experiment on Stunner will be to go ahead and set up the client software. So I'm going to share my screen, and you can follow along. Okay. So I've already logged into the software here, and the first screen that you're seeing gives you a, a brief idea of how many different applications Stunner can, can run and how many different sample types it can work with. We're going to dive into the gene therapy menu and pick the AAV quant application. Okay. So to do a quick experiment here, it's pretty simple to name your experiment and pick your Stunner plate, which is going to be you know, more than 99% of experiments you'll run on Stunner, just using the default settings. And now comes the really kind of cool part that I like a lot. So this is where you define where the samples are on your plate. And it's just a very nice you know, click and drag, uh, paint type of interface, uh, which is, I don't know, I kind of like drawing stuff on this. But if you wanted to do something a little bit faster, we can actually go and import uh, from an Excel with just a couple of clicks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and do a quick Excel import. And we'll see that. The sample layout's just loaded in there with two blanks, and I'll have two AAV samples, an AAV5 and an AAV9. And those have been loaded in quadruplicates. So next, we get into the sample group screen. Uh, this is associating one blank with each sample group so that it knows, hey, these four samples are associated with that uh, buffer blank, and these orange samples here are associated with the other buffer blank. Also, where it starts where I can help to um, define my sample groups so you know what those samples will be. So these I've just named A, B, 5, and 9. But on the next screen, I'll assign the analyte to each of those groups. So because I've loaded this from my Excel, uh, the software already knows that for my A, B, 5 sample, it's running the live demo A, B, 5 analyte. Uh, but if I had a different A, B serotype or a different genetic uh, payload in my AV, I could very easily pick a different analyte from any one of the 10 serotypes that's pre-programmed in Stunner or through making a custom uh, AV with a different length genome. Pretty simple to do. Okay, so those are my sample groups and my analytes. Next, it's a couple of clicks through a few review screens to make sure that everything's all set. Uh, and then I'm ready to go load my sample. So I'll hit next and stop sharing. So. For this, again, super simple, just dropping my plate in like you would with any other, you know, 96 well uh, plate reading instrument. And I will close up that drawer. Okay, now let's switch gears while Stunner uh, goes ahead and reads those samples. We'll take a look at the analysis software. Okay. As I said before, you know, we ran some AV samples earlier, and what we're looking at is the results from that experiment that I just showed you how to set up. Uh, so the first screen that we're seeing here uh, is the analysis of the capsid titer on Stunner, and I'll explain you know, what those blue and green bars mean as well. So the first thing I want to show is for these quadruplicate replicates, uh, we're getting capsid titer results at about 2.8 E13 capsids per mil, and uh, because we're running in quadruplicates, you can actually see that the precision has about a 2.6% CV, which is pretty impressive for a capsid titer that you're getting in about 45 seconds per sample uh, with no real sample prep. Uh, even the bottom sample has a little bit higher CV, but it's still 8.8% CV. Very typical to see results in the single digits there. Okay, if we want to uh, dive into the details on the sample, we can look at the sample B1, and I'll take you through each of those three detection technologies one by one. So first, we'll start with the world of UV-Vis. Now, with a normal UV-Vis instrument, all you're going to get will be this black line. That's the total UV-Vis absorbance. But because Stunner is a really, really smart piece of software, 
it's able to deconvolute or break down that black line into its component pieces that you told Stunner what was in there. So in this case, we told Stunner that, hey, this is an AAV5 sample. It has about a 2.5 kilobase payload. And so it's breaking down that signal into uh, green, which is DNA, and blue, which is protein, uh, and then a few other things. Gray is turbidity, purple is going to be in kind of contaminants that are in your sample. Okay, so from this read, we're getting an answer on how much total DNA and protein is present in our sample. Uh, that's what we'll actually use to calculate the empty full ratio. But we also have other technologies present in Stunner, like DLS. So let's check that out. Here we see a distribution of the, the size uh, and any kind of aggregates that are present in this sample. So for an AAV sample, we'll expect that result to be uh, have a peak somewhere around the 25 to 30 nanometer uh, diameter range. And what we're showing here in green is the total amount of signal uh, from static light scattering, which is just an intensity, and it's going to be the total amount of signal that is coming from just your capsids. So this is going to be the starting point for our capsid titer information. So all of that green area under the curve is going to be what gives us uh, that very precise capsid titer answer that I showed you right at the beginning. Uh, while we're also looking at this kind of DLS result, we can uh, quickly understand if there's lots of problems with aggregation or if our sample is very nicely monodisperse. So here I'm just looking at the quadruplicates of that AAV5 sample, and you see that these results are, are pretty good. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a therapeutically purified AAV, uh, but it's a pretty reasonable day-to-day -day sample that you might find in a typical experiment in lab. Okay, so from there, we'll look back at that first uh, bar chart that I showed earlier, which is the, the synthesis of all three technologies put together. What we're seeing here is kind of two worlds, the world of protein and the world of DNA. In the world of protein, that's the blue bar chart here, the total height of this column will be the total number of proteins that you, or total number of capsids that you could make given all the protein present uh, and detected by UV vis. Now, we all know that given all that protein, uh, it's not guaranteed to all be in capsids. So that's when we can take in this light scattering information from DLS and uh, SLS and figure out, hey, based on that light scattering information, we have a maximum of about 2.7 uh, E13 capsids per mil in the sample. So that dark blue bar will be our total capsid titer. Uh, and then same kind of logic applies to the green bar chart, which is the world of DNA where the total height is how many total genomes you could make given that UV vis absorbance, and the total height of the dark green uh, part of the bar will be the amount of full capsids that you have. So from this experiment, there we have a total capsid titer, a full capsid titer uh, that's calculated easily into an empty full ratio shown in this uh, you know, gold and purple bar, so this is about 90% full by that math. And then we're also looking for any kind of impurities or aggregates by UV vis and DLS. And that same kind of analysis can be shown uh, for this AAV9 sample as well, where you'll see a little bit of impurities, but again, you see a lot of this protein and DNA present. Uh, you see very accurate UV vis reads because these quadruplicate samples are right on top of each other. Uh, and then you can go through and digest that all the way through a capsid titer too. That's a really nice look at all of the information that you can get uh, from a quick read of your AAV samples on Stunner. So now I'll probably go ahead and stop sharing, and I think we'll go ahead and take some questions. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Kevin, for this great demo. And uh, we have uh, a number of questions that have come in already, so let's take those one by one. Uh, first, a question on the practical nature of things. What sample prep do you need to do for a stunner or before a stunner run? Ah, okay. So the short answer to this is exactly what you saw today. Usually, you can just run your stunner or run your AAV uh, with exactly the sample that you have. You don't need standards. You don't need reagents. You don't need dyes. Uh, it's working off of UV vis and light scattering methods, kind of calculating from first principles, and those are all going to be a standard-free approach to characterizing. Thank you very much. Uh, another practical question, how do you know which side to appropriately load the plate? Which, so there is a, a little uh, notch on one corner of the plate. Uh, it'll pop back out in a minute or two, and you'll see it's uh, you know, corner, 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 notch, and it's uh, impossible to load it the wrong way because of the way we have the hardware configured in Stunner. Very good, thank you. Uh, we have two data questions. What is the precision of data obtained on Stunner? Hmm, okay, so for precision, I gave you a little bit of a, a, a preview of a typical sample on the analysis software, uh, but it's very common to see C percent CVs in the single digit range 
uh, particularly for capsititer, which is really, really great when you consider it's only 45 seconds per sample read, and you know, you're comparing that to ELISA capsititers, which will have CVs in the 15, 20, 25% range. Uh, be a lot more expensive and take a lot longer to do. Okay. Um, and then, um, thank you. Another question about the data is how does Stunner compare, how does a titer from Stunner compare to a titer from qPCR? Mm, okay. So they're definitely measuring different things. Uh, qPCR will be sequence specific and uh, titer by Stunner will be looking at the biophysical characteristics, so how much DNA, how much protein, uh, how much light scattering signal is present in your sample. Um, but generally they agree quite well. Uh, there's a few publications that we have out in the world uh, recently or have you know, in press right now um, or application notes that our team can, can share all this data with you if you want to reach out and learn more. Um, I'll also say too that this is a good opportunity that Stunner's uh, lower limit for titering because it's based on a biophysical method is about 1 E12 capsids per mil. Um, so there's a difference there too between qPCR and Stunner. Very good, thank you. Um, uh, one of the attendees is asking that they are working with a custom AAV, not with a default serotype. Is it possible to use a non-default serotype in Stunner? Oh, definitely. So because of the you know, predominance of recombinant capsids, we made it really, really easy to customize that kind of analysis on Stunner. Uh, what you saw today was an analysis with uh, naturally occurring AAV serotypes 5 and 9 with a custom length uh, uh, genome in there. But if you have a recombinant capsid, all you have to do is go create your own analyte, which is as easy as changing your amino acid sequence, changing your VP ratio, or your percent of post-translational modifications, uh, which just takes, takes uh, seconds. It's something we can easily walk you through. Thank you. Um, Alessio is asking the range of detection for capsid titers and genome titers. Mm, OK. So as a rule of thumb, we usually say about 1 E12 uh, capsids per mil for the lower limit. That's just because that's uh, how much AAV you need to be picked up by light scattering and UV vis. Uh, that'll be true for uh, full capsids. As you have less and less DNA, you have less and less uh, mass present in your AAV. So you get a little bit higher for an empty AAV. Your lower limit might be in the range of 2 to 3 E12 capsids per mil. Um, there's no upper limit. I've seen results on samples in the E to 14 range. Uh, but, you know, Stunner was originally born working with biologics and antibody uh, samples in the tens to hundreds of milligrams per mil, and you're just not going to uh, get that high with the AV. So, no upper limit, lower limit, rule of thumb about 1E12. Thank you very much. Debbie is wondering, once the plate is opened and you use only part of it, how long until you need to use the rest of the wells, and how would you pl store the plate in between runs? Uh, okay. Uh, so what we usually do is just have them stored in something like a Ziploc bag. What you're really doing here is you're protecting it from dust, uh, which is going to be the enemy of, of DLS results. So um, I, you know, I don't know if we have a formal recommendation on the amount of storage we can do, but I, I typically what we're seeing in lab is you know, in the weeks to months uh, type of range, as long as you have it in a pretty clean environment. Very good, thank you. Um, two people are actually wondering about GMP compliance and 21 CFR Part 11 compliance of the software. Sure. So uh, we have 21 CFR Part 11 tools that you can purchase as a software add-on. Uh, they're very nice and elegant, really uh, stay out of the way when you're doing analysis, which is something that I'm particularly proud of for our software. Uh, and then for any kind of other uh, GXP considerations, we have a lot of different standards that are available uh, to kind of make sure that you have system suitability uh, checks that you can run on Stunner. Very good, thank you. And I think uh, we have time for one more. Can you use iodixanol or cesium chloride purified AAV in Stunner? Yes, uh, so cesium chloride doesn't really present any kind of issues. Uh, for iodixanol, it absorbs a lot of UV vis, uh, even at very low concentrations. So there's a few different you know, behaviors you can get from Stunner. When iodixanol is, you know, very highly purified out, you'll get exactly what you saw today. Uh, you might get a little bit of detection of iodixanol present, uh, where Sunday will quantify it for you, uh, but it, it's not too much of an issue. If we know what to look for, we can uh, eliminate it using you know, math. Uh, if iodixanol is too high and absorbing too much of the signal, then what you'll get from Stunner will be, first of all, quantification of how much iodixanol you have, and then second of all, it's going to use just light scattering to quantify your capsid titers. So you'll still get a range of possible capsid titers, but Stunner can't combine its technologies anymore uh, to get you a single accurate answer because UV-Biz is now 
all IADICs and all, all the time, basically. So uh, it's the kind of thing where you can use Stunner to quickly understand, hey, what's my approximate caps of titer? And use Stunner to understand how far along your buffer exchange has gone to get rid of that IADICs and all. OK, very good. Um, thank you very much, Kevin, for the great demo. And thank you for answering all the questions that came into the chat. And thanks to everybody in the audience for joining us this morning for our live demo. If you would like to get in touch further, please reach out to us. We'd love to chat more about your applications and how Stunner can be used. And I think with that, all that remains is to wish you a good rest of your day. And thanks again for joining our live demo today. Thank you much.